In this video, I will be going through the startup operating exercises and shutdown procedures for the temperature control loop. After you have verified that all operators have the correct PPP, PPE on and you have finished your pre-startup safety review, you can start by powering up the unit. The first step in powering up the unit will be going to the back of the unit and turning on the four main power switches that are located there. The next step in powering up the unit would be to turn on the chiller. It helps to do this step and let the chiller run for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, so it can have adequate time to cool the cold water tank. Now we will plug in the controller and allow the controller time to self-calibrate. For correct output to the flow control valve, select F5 and verify that your gain is at 50, your reset is at 10, and your rate is at 0.25. Now we can connect the air supply hose to the utility box. Turn our supply valve on and adjust our pressure to 25 PSI. The initial valve lineup for the temperature control loop is all valves in the closed position. The next step in the start procedure will be to stroke the control valve. We can use the automatic manual switch to place the controller into manual. Select output, clear, set our output to zero, valve will fully open, go back to output, set it to 25, verify that the valve closed 25%. Set it to 50. Verify that the valve closed to 50%. Set it to 75. Verify that the valve closed to 75%. And set the valve to output to 100. Verify that the flow control valve is now 100% closed. Now you can repeat these steps back to restoring the output to 0%. The next step in our startup procedure will be starting the cooling water side of the temperature control loop. We will align the minimum flow line by opening the pump one suction valve, which is valve one, and we will also open valve three. Now we will turn on pump one. And we will open valve two. Verify that you now have flow flowing back into uh, the cold water tank and adjust valve three to achieve somewhere between 10 and 15 PSI on pump one. Now we're at about 15. Now we can open the flow control valve uh, bypass valve, which is valve, v valve 10. And now we can open the heat exchanger shell side outlet valves, which are V7 and V5. And now we can open the heat exchanger shell side inlet valves, which are V4 and V6.
and at this point verify that all the valves you've opened are on the cooling water side of the unit and you can adjust the minimum flow line valve 3 until the pump outlet pressure reads 20 psi now that we are finished with the cold water side we can start the hot water side startup the first step will be aligning the hot water minimum flow line by opening the pump 2 suction valve which is valve 11 and the minimum flow line valve which is valve 13 Now we can start pump two and allow pressure to build. We'll turn our switch right here. And now we can open valve 12. At this point, you can verify that water is flowing back into the hot water tank and you can adjust the minimum flow line valve 13 to achieve 10 to 15 PSI on pump two. Our next steps will be to open valves 15 and 14 in that order. And now we will open the heat exchanger tube side outlet valves, which are valve 17 and 19. And now we will open the heat exchanger tube side inlet valves, which are valves 16 and 18. Now we can adjust the minimum flow line valve 13 until the pump outlet pressure reads 35 PSI. At this point, the operator should verify that water is flowing on both sides of the unit. And the next step would be to turn on the heater. At this point, we can start our operating exercise number one. Before starting, make sure that operators have a heat gun before starting the exercise. Our next step in the operating exercise will be to close the heat exchanger shell side inlet valves, which are V4 and V6. After closing those two valves, you can adjust valve three in case you need to adjust the pump outlet pressure. Now we will close the heat exchanger shell size side outlet valves, which are valves V7 and V5. Now we will allow time for the chiller to cool down the cold water tank if need be, and the heater to heat up as well. We will wait until our tube side inlet is reading 110 degrees. Now that our tube side inlet is at around 110 degrees, we will open the heat exchanger shell side outlet valves, which are V5 and V7. And now we'll open our heat exchanger shell side inlet valves, which are valves four and six. And you can adjust valve three if you need to increase or decrease the pump outlet pressure. At this point in the exercise, you can grab a pen and a piece of paper and record your outlet and inlet temperatures for both the shell side and the tube side of the heat exchangers. 
Moving on to operating exercise number two. We can open the flow control valve block valves, which are valves eight and nine. Now we can close the flow control valve bypass valve, which is valve 10. Now we can use the automatic manual selector to place the controller into automatic mode. Now we will adjust the set point to above our process value. And when making these changes, make a prediction on what you think will happen. The valve will open or close to reach the new set point. And again, allow time for the unit to reach your new set point. Now we can adjust our set point to below our process value. And before making these changes, again, make a prediction on what you think will happen. Will the flow control valve close or open to reach your new set point? Allow time for the unit to reach your new set point. Now that we are done with our operating exercises, we can start the shutdown procedure. First, we'll start with our hot water side. First thing we'll do will be to turn off the heater. Next step will be to open our minimum flow line valve, which is valve 13, 100%. We can now close our heat exchanger tube side inlet valves, which are valves 16 and 18. Now we can close our heat exchanger tube side outlet valves, which are V19 and V17. We can now close valves 14 and 15 in that order. We can now turn off pump two. And we can close valves 11, 12, and 13. Now that the hot water side is shut down, we can turn to the cold water side. Our first step will be to turn off the chiller. Next step will be to open the minimum flow line valve, which is valve three to 100%. Next, we can close the heat exchanger shell side inlet valves, which are valves four and six. Now we can close our heat exchanger shell side outlet valves, which are valves five and seven. Now we can close the flow control valve block valves, which are valves eight and nine. Now we can turn off pump one. And we can close valves one, two, and three. Now that we are done shutting down the hot water side and cold water side, we can start our control loop shutdown. First thing being would be to turn off the four main power switches on the back of the unit. Next, we can unplug our controller. We can adjust our air supply down to zero. Turn our supply valve off and unplug our air hose. Now we are complete with our startup operating exercises and shutdown for the temperature control loop before leaving the unit. After operating it, verify that there are no leaks or malfunctions present and that the unit is in correct operating condition for the next operator. And make sure to notify your instructor of any issues that you had with the unit or that you noticed.
for troubleshooting or maintenance.